this bulletin just in. The Federal Aviation Administration reports that a plane carrying 25 persons crashed tonight in southwest Mississippi. The van was aboard a small twin-engine plane on their way to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, when the plane lost fuel and crashed. Six people lost their lives. Among them was the heart and soul of the band, Ronnie Van Zant. Twenty others on board somehow survived the crash, including guitarist Gary Rossington. I don't want to raise anything that's nightmarish. It has to be nightmarish for it. But you're in the plane, you know it's going down. Give us a sense of that. I mean, did you spend your time in prayer? Did you spend your time cursing the airplane? Well, we were playing poker and just having a flight, you know, on a private plane. There's no rules. You don't have to buckle up or sit down the whole time or nothing. Anyway, we were just flying along. But the pilot, the co-pilot came back and said, hey guys, we got trouble. We're going to make a emergency landing in a field, so get ready. Put your head between your legs and buckle up. So most people did that, you know. Now myself, I was, Ronnie was by me, and Dean, another guy that died during the crash, our, our road manager, Dean Kirkpatrick, and, and Alan was across from me, and Cassie and Steve Gaines, they both died. And me and Alan didn't, so we always ask ourselves, why didn't we go and not them? But the sense before it crashed was, you're in so much shock or, or disbelief, and at the same time, belief, and oh my God, it's true. And what, you don't have time to think, even if you had 10 minutes. Your mind just goes. And I thought, I just, you know, was waiting and thinking, nothing. You know, I didn't know what to think. And, but it was really scary for a minute. And then all of a sudden it was a real calm, like, well, it's gonna happen. And then it started and we hit the tops of trees and it was real loud and started soft. It got so loud until it just crashed, you know. And I woke up, uh, it was like a Vietnam experience or something. I wasn't there, but I woke up in a swamp hearing all my brothers crying or screaming. You know, because they were hurt and it was natural or dead. And so I was laying, I was hurt real bad. And I thought the plane door was on me, or some hunk of metal. And I screamed out for somebody to get it off of me. And finally I said, Dean, a road manager, get this thing off of me. And well, Dean walked over and threw that piece of metal off of me. But then later in the hospital, a few weeks later, uh, a doctor told me that the way he came in, he was so, he couldn't have done that. What happened to him? So it was his spirit. So I believe in that. But there was so much I could go on for two days he about. He was a helper, wasn't he? The, yeah. 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 And the, he was it's God. It was God. You see him. And after the crash, I remember laying in the hospital for the first week or so. But the first three or four days, I say three because that's when Jesus you know, was resurrected after three days. But I could see all over their faces and the flowers, people were seeing a lot of flowers. <clears throat> they were all over the room and when I looked in there, I'd see them. And I believe it was their spirit helped me get through it. But coming to me and being there right with me, I remember that, but, but going down, that sense of going down, to me it was more peaceful than crazy. Nobody said a word. Everybody just went, all right, this is for real. Let's do it. And I still question why I'm here, you know. And so it's something you live to forget and wish you could forget it. It's the worst thing ever happened to you. But then you talk about it and you live it every day. So it's a, that's why I'm so crazy and goofy. <laughs> but, but it was pretty, it was the heaviest thing that ever happened, you know.